and you're listening to The Brown Perspective. This is Eduardo, and I'm here with R.O. Hey, what's going on today? Today, I'm going to bring a, a serious topic to the table that I think as as males, uh, Lat- Latino males, we need to discuss, which is the recent Supreme Court decision on the abortion rights in Texas. And I know that this is a complicated subject for many reasons, but I do think that it's important for us uh, to to discuss it um, because I think it's an issue that not only impacts women, but it impacts uh, families, including us, right? Because I, I think in some ways this is one of the very concrete ways that the patriarchy is still exerting its, its, its power over female bodies. That's right. We're giving it light this week. <laughs> Nothing too serious, just the entire banning <laughs> of abortion in the state of Texas. Effectively, that's what they're trying to do. And Yeah. You know, but I think most of us saw it coming when when the Supreme Court went conservative. I mean, I knew that it was only a matter of time before states started making it harder and harder and more ridiculous because ultimately they know that this can is going to work its way to the Supreme Court and they know they have a chance of of shutting it down nationwide. Yeah, and I think it was it was um I I think you're right. I think part of the reason and particularly when you think of the last Supreme Court justice to be uh, confirmed, uh, Amy Comey Barrett, as a Catholic uh, and someone who I think follows the church's teachings. I think it was it was um, it was known that if, a, if an abortion case were to come to the Supreme Court, it, it would now the dynamics were completely different. Um, it was interesting to see that uh, Chief Justice Roberts. Uh, sided with the minority on, you know, voting against the the bill that not the bill, the decision that that the followed their their communications about not taking the the case. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, so I think for me is is yes, it's it, it it was expected, but at the same time, you know, a lot has happened between. When um, back in 1973, when Roe versus Wade was originally decided, and I think the fact that the women were empowered to make their own, you know, healthcare decisions as it relate related to their um, reproductive rights had a lot to do. And I don't think it's just something that that they're gonna let go. It's not a right that they're gonna just let uh, go without a fight. But again, it does show a a very particular instance where the system is still still geared towards um, towards defending the rights of the minority uh, on this view, particularly in this case, the conservative side of the spectrum. You know, what's really interesting about this case is that it encourages people to effectively snitch to come forward with information if you know that somebody is participating in, in an abortion. I, I, I'm trying to look for that information. Yeah, I think that there is um, there's an area where, and actually there's also a, a somewhat of an incentive because I, I believe that that person who, who is snitches would get like $10,000. Um, and obviously that's a, a strong economic incentive to, to, um, to sort of tell on someone who you suspect is is going to get an abortion or do an exercise or you know do the um, procedure to get an abortion which is which is crazy and I think that's part of the law which I can see and and this is also how you see how creative legally creative conservatives can be so making it so it's not the state that is prohibiting the individual from getting the abortion, but in this case, is an in, individuals turning on individuals. But you can certainly see how this type of 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 logic and this type of law really leads to a, a slippery slope, which is not good. And I think it's not to say that it's such a a big infringement on our constitutional rights to to privacy and to do whatever the hell the hell we want. Yeah, and this is what is so ironic with this law that Texas is is a conservative state and you see similar laws in other conservative states as well. 
but in this case, the conservatives who you would just think if you're going to categorize them in terms of what their political leanings are, then they are anti-abortion. And in this case, they're encouraging for people to spy effectively on each other and to turn to turn other people into the authorities for what they consider to be something that they're doing illegally. Yet these are the same type of people that will go out and tell you that the states should not mandate mandate vaccines because we're we're turning into a surveillance state and they want to keep track of every little thing you do and what they're doing is they're turning people against each other by by um cre creating this division between those that are vaccinated and those that are not because those are the arguments that you will see on social media but then these these people i wouldn't be surprised if you find them on 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 two different locations just with when it comes to covid and vaccines and when it comes to abortion arguing for completely the opposite thing and con contradicting themselves. Yeah, I don't want the, I don't want the government to tell me what to do or, or make the decision on whether or not I want my my kid to wear a mask or school. But I do want the government to to uh, interfere. My wife and I decide to have an abortion because we don't want to have a kid at this particular moment in time. Um, so, yeah, so I think that. And it's been great that the social media memes and, and everyone is kind of calling out the hypocrisy at this moment in time. But let me ask you this. What do you think is the besides sort of the faith argument and maybe we can tackle that too? you know, the faith argument or a religious argument about the preciousness of life and all that stuff. So let's acknowledge that there is a religious topic and argument that we may or may not get to. But do you think there's there are any other motivations for why the conservatives want to limit abortion rights? What what is it about limiting abortion rights that it's so fundamental to to being a conservative or to a conservative not being a conservative but to a conservative philosophy? Yeah, well, I think that's a one that's one that's really difficult to answer. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why. First of all, you can just take the take the position that it's a wedge issue, so that mm -hmm. everything in, in our society now, politicians use these these wedge issues to galvanize support and to also, in a way, keep keep the population divided. And and they know that they have a base that they can count on reliably to go in and tell them like, look, they're killing babies, so we need your support. But you can only do that if there's a, a, a certain group of the population that feels that way to begin with. And that that then now takes us into the affiliation that the conservatives in America still have with religion or this supposed claim affiliation that they have. Because if you if you look at at people like like Chris Hedges, who who is actually he has a background in religion, he says that whenever he tries to talk to all these Christians, conservative Christians about religion, that they don't want to talk to him because he actually knows religion. He's read he's read the mm -hmm. books. He can quote he can quote um uh, the Bible, and he also understands, and he can explain to them that you know that that Jesus did a lot of things that are contradictory to like these like corporate evangelical capitalists that have have somehow associated corporate uh, U.S. exceptionalism and capitalism with with Christianity, right? Because all of a sudden these conservatives are the same ones that are about pick yourself up by your, by the bootstraps, uh, about this country enables possibilities for everyone, and then when it talks about taking care of other people. They don't really seem to care about that, about um, socialist aspects of a society that can actually help the, the t people for, for, the, for, the greater, uh, for the greater good. Um, so there's some of that at play. Ultimately, like me personally, I've always seen these as, as wedge issues. I, mm -hmm. I, it, and, and again, it's just like I, I've, always, I've always said, I may, may have said this to you before as well. When I used to go to church as a kid, because my mom used to essentially force me to have to go to church with their Christian church. Um, and she moved around from, she tried different churches as well, all, all Christian in the Latino community. And it became mm -hmm. pretty obvious to me right away after, after she would go into a new church and she would then get to know the pastor and she'd get to know the families and talk to them. I knew right away that these guys didn't believe what they were selling, but they knew that the people that they were selling it to believed it. So y you have some, somewhat of a similar situation here where some of them are just opportunists and they know that people will fall in line because of this issue because they believe that it's the right thing to do, the moral thing to do. Even though they might be morally hollow, have empty morals in other areas, they, they, this is the one issue that they hold on to that it's like, okay, we're going to draw our line in the sand. And then they just one single issue voters that will vote on this issue no matter what. 
So that's part of it. I, I know it's like I'm kind of all over the place, but it's really it, it's hard for me to just pinpoint it into into just one thing. I it's it's a it's a number of things here. Yeah, no, I think you're right, and I think you cover probably some of the main reasons why they do use this. Uh, you know, because it is such a, in particular when you put it that that way, right? Why are you for killing babies? Like, why would you kill babies? Um, and obviously, nobody wants to kill babies, but what's but what's uh what what's at fundamental here is that this is a a women's health care issue right it's it's the woman who's carrying the baby is the woman who and obviously if she's with somebody her partner um they can decide whether or not they want to have um that pregnancy or not whether they're not whether they are at that particular moment in the relationship or what have you to have to have uh, to have kids. And then so like for me, it's like you need to also think about the rights that the mom have about controlling her own her own destiny and her own health. But then they'll, um, and then sorry to interrupt, because the, when you use that argument, what they'll come back with is saying, well, you can't let parents have kids and torture and beat those kids. You can't just let parents do whatever they want with their kids, right? You have to, you have to have some balance where the government comes in and sets some some laws and, and regulations to protect the kids from the parents. Yeah, and I think that they they do, they do. But I bet you that oftentimes those people who are mistreating their kids and torturing their kids. They probably would would have gotten an abortion or would have aborted them if they had if they had had the access to to do it safely. Right. Maybe not. Right. Because I think that's part of the problem that in some ways you are forcing um, you're forcing women and then sometimes couples to have kids that that they're not ready to have. And I think what's problematic, too, with the Texas law is that it doesn't even have an exception uh, for allowing an abortion in case of rape or incest. So can you imagine yeah. if 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 a young girl is raped uh, by a close relative or somebody else and is forced to have this kid? I mean, what kind of like emotional attachment is that mom going to have with her kid? And maybe it's because of that traumatic experience that she doesn't like the kid because obviously she, it may remind her of that traumatic episode. And there's so many things that, and I know there's been a lot of documented cases of women who get those type of unwanted pregnancies and then have to deal with that. And they were not prepared to to be moms and unfortunately perhaps not being in the right state of mind psychologically then leads to the abuse and other, other things. But yeah. I, but go ahead. Yeah, the, the, and that touches on the other part that I didn't mention earlier, which is just complete control. So, so this again the the patriarchy system that wants to tell women how it is that they can and can interact with their bodies, and so that that's at play too. And just they they find the act of what they considered killing killing a baby. So now now they're limiting it, li- limiting it to six weeks. They find that so morally reprehensible that it overrides any other potential negative consequences of what may happen as a result of that because they'll just they, they they they'll weigh them and say well look even if it's incest even if you were raped whatever the outcome of that is it is not as morally reprehensible as you killing a baby because a baby is defenseless there's nobody here to there's nobody here um the baby can't defend itself so we're trying to do it on its behalf and look honestly i i, I think i can go along with that type of reasoning I, I think I could I mm-hmm. could find it at least justifiable, or I could expect that 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 position. If these people were consistent, if they showed that mm-hmm. type of consistency when it came to other morally reprehensible things that we do as a society, because these are the same people that are now going to encourage and, and are for U.S. exceptionalism that may incarcerate an overwhelming amount of African Americans or Hispanics based on like the police state that we have to for, for those like criminalize the, the poor, right? Or we go and bomb mm-hmm. kids in Afghanistan, and they don't seem to give a shit about that. So there's absolutely no consistency when it comes to like what they consider morally reprehensible. And now you know that they're just doing selective, selective um, politics or 
uh, selective outrage. And and to me, it's, that's disingenuous. Like I could see it if they were consistent with, with all of that, that they value life. And, and if the same people that say they value the life of a baby, that, that they were also concerned about the life of that baby after it was born, right? After mm-hmm. it's born to maybe a family that can't afford to have that baby or it's born out of incest or, or rape, the baby maybe is not accepted. I mean, they don't, they don't seem to care after the, the baby's born. So again, it's just power, uh, control, and also a, a good a good way to mobilize a pretty significant portion of people in this country because they are religious and, and they do believe it. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that I have family members that would be completely for this just because of their association with religion. Yeah. And to your point, and I think to your point, this is something that really impacts, you know, low income women of color, right? So, it's, which is, because if you if, if you're well off and well to do and you live in the state of Texas, uh, you probably have access. You can travel to another state, a neighboring state, or somewhere else to get the abortion. Um, and they'll do it, by the way, because it that's yeah, been exactly. it, that's been documented that the politicians, the same politicians that pass these laws, they'll have affairs. They'll encourage the the mistress to go and have an abortion, and people with money they'll get it if they need it, but they just want to impose a certain lifestyle. A certain loss on other people but not have them apply to themselves yeah and part of it seems like they they want to use these cases to you know for poor women to have kids that impacts their ability to you know get their life on track go to school get a job and not to say because there's a lot of women out there who who have had kids at a younger age and have been able to succeed, uh, but it's difficult, right? It's, it's a lot more difficult where you don't choose, where you don't have the ability to decide when you're ready to have a kid or not. And not to say that you, and you know, you're not. I don't think you're ever ready, ready, ready to have a kid, but but it does impact uh, women, women uh, disproportionately. And. And I think for me, I want to make the point that I always want to kind of think of what would be a law that would be the the male equivalent to this. Like I, I want to say maybe like mandating that any kid over the age of 13 get a, a vasectomy so that way they're not impregnating uh, women, right? Like whether it's a temporary vasectomy or something like that, like because there's really no other there's no other way that the state interferes in the in the in the male um, in the male reproductive rights, right? So I think the the equivalent would be, and this is just me being facetious, by the way, but this is one way of looking at it. <laughs> it would be if the male gets the woman pregnant, then the state is going to force that male to to have to be by her side if she chooses to want you, right? If she wants you around, then you have to be there. You have to guarantee that that kid is going to have a, a minimum of like three meals a day. And you're going to have to guarantee that that kid goes through school, excels in schools, goes to college and become an astrophysicist or a doctor. Right. That type of control over you micro, to micromanage you to say, hey, you got this woman pregnant. This is the outcome that we expect from you now, which is totally uh, ludicrous to expect every single uh, guy to be able to do that, to achieve that. But that's that's I mean, maybe it's even still worse what they try to impose on women to do. But that just kind of gives you an idea of maybe what they ha- would have to do to make it the equivalent on men. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that and I think there is this there's this assumption that because I, I think there are people who genuinely believe this and maybe are consistent and maybe you don't hear about those people as much as you hear about the folks who are not consistent but I think they have to realize that not everybody's operating at that same level. To your point, like I'm sure that there are dads who, you know, who are young, who get their girlfriend pregnant and then they step up, right? They yeah. they are by that kid. And I and I know plenty of people who are like that. And and they stay, they help, they 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 go through the good and bad times and then yeah, maybe they're kid doesn't become an, an astrophysicist but that person was there working hard was a male presence um and you know and hopefully it was a male who wasn't arrested or criminalized just because he was a brown man or black man um so those people do exist and they're and they're out there but 
just to have this expectation that everybody's going to be able to live up to that to that uh, moral or to that example is, is is unrealistic. I mean, it'd be great if we had people that were we had more people that were like that. But from my experience, what I've seen is that moral consistency is is very rare, and I think we know it when we see it because. Uh, to be morally consistent on this issue of abortion would be that if you care about life, if you care about the life of the fetus, you also care about life after birth, which means that you're somebody that uh, you might be pro uh, anti-abortion. OK, but now if you're consistent, then you're also pro uh, socialist programs, pro mm -hmm. a type of uh, education, a type of safety net for, for, for those parents. You're, you're pro um trying to create a society that values life instead of like being pro-capitalist, a, a, a society that exploits people and forces them to work um, more than, you know, uh, ironic that today is Labor Day, but uh, that forces them to have to work two to three jobs just to maybe make enough to be able to support a family, which means that most of the parents are not even home uh, to, to take care of their kids a lot of the times. And then these kids are are uh, in and out of trouble or, or maybe they don't get the best experience maybe they go into drugs i mean it creates so much capitalism creates so many dysfunctions in our society and that has a a, a huge um uh, it, it's a huge effect on or it's a huge burden on people and it has a huge effect on life and so usually when you find people that are morally consistent these are the people that are like completely hated by the mainstream media because they talk about stuff like sensible policy that could actually help people. They could start, they could start getting called communists. Uh, so it's really hard to find someone that with that type. It's usually very selective. And people just justify, they find ways to justify why it is how they think they're not being complete hypocrites. But a lot of the times they are, and it's, it's really easy to sniff them out. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think if, if the, the fetus is a person at six weeks, then make sure you're providing free prenatal care. Yep. To those women that once the child is born that they're providing uh you know family leave so they can exactly they can take care of them some free uh pre-k um all those things and i think as we conclude this conversation i know that in new jersey um they're trying to pass a bill that would be a little bit more positive on the opposite end of the spectrum as it relates to abortion rights and i think it's a bill that would really focus on the healthcare aspect of it, right? To making sure that, that women have access to that, that a service that fundamental, it, it is about having, um, having access to the care that, that, that they need to, to make the decisions that are best for themselves and for their families. Yeah. And that might be the future that we are, are looking at in maybe a few decades. If this does go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court shuts it down, then you will have this fracture where a lot of states will become really conservative about this. But then states like California and others are probably going to have to pass laws like New Jersey to try to uh, at least give women a, a choice within, the, within whatever uh, new guidelines come out. And that, I think in closing too, I'll just mention that I heard I heard, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson, the, the guy that does the, the reboot of Cosmos, the astrophysicist. Mm -hmm. And he said something that, that has stuck with me for a long time because I heard this about 10 years ago. He, he, he talks about how during that time when a lot of knowledge was passed to Europe from the Middle East, how there were so many inventions, how there was so much progress that came out of the Middle East. And, mm -hmm. and then he's trying to explain why is it that, that all of a sudden that came to a halt. And he actually links some of that to, to the arrival of religion, especially a type of religion that was very regressive, that all of a sudden science wasn't like at, at, the, at the forefront of it, discovery and all these things. And, and so society is just kind of like regressed. And I'm not saying that, that that's how it is now, but he makes this interesting link. Whether it's true or not, is, it, it, it's, you know, it's up for debate, but... Uh, if you see more and more of like the religious right, the conservative right in America take us in that direction, then it could also mean like in the future a regression of collectively as a society because they start shunning science. They start um, if everything is has to be by a scripture that was written 2000 and years ago, things are very restrictive. You take away freedoms, you get regression in a society. And so, you know, maybe that's that's what's in store. Uh We'll see. Hopefully not, but it was just an interesting observation. 
No, yeah, that's a good point. And probably maybe at our next conversation, we can have a religion versus science um, kind of dialogue. But I do think that fundamentally uh, you can believe both in science and religion. And I think in some ways when you dive into science and, and you kind of start seeing some of the magical things that happen in this world because of science. And I think that in some ways there's that you can believe, right. That you mm. can believe that, uh, that there's religion and science and science can be part of, of religion. At least that's one thought that we can, we can, uh, explore at the next conversation, but I think this will be all for our conversation today. Um, again, we are the Brown Perspective. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter and on YouTube at the Brown Perspective. Um, this is Eduardo signing off, and I'll turn it over to R.O. Yeah. Nos vemos. Ciao.